Chapter 10, Lesson 5. In this lesson, we'll speak uh, about how uh, stoichiometry is related to gases. Now, I know you've uh, waited a few chapters now uh, without hearing this word, and you're anxious to hear uh, us speak about stoichiometry again. So we're here, uh, we're not going to disappoint you. Now, recall that stoichiometry is simply the mole or gram relationship uh, between the reactants and products of a reaction. And traditionally, we have thought of these numbers, coefficients, as standing for moles, and they do stand for moles. So we can say, for example, that two moles of NaN3 produce two moles of Na and three moles of nitrogen gas. Now, if we have gases, especially if we have a reaction like this here, where we have gases both in the reactants and in the products, what we can uh, equally say is that three liters of O2 produce three, or I'm sorry, two liters of SO2. These can stand for volume as well as moles. And the reason for this uh, is because uh, of Avogadro's law, which we call uh, relates volume and moles, giving you a constant. So it's directly proportional, which means uh, whatever we can say about moles, we can say about volumes, as long as, we're, as, long as both of these are in the gaseous state. And this will um, create some interesting uh, problems uh, that we can solve. Uh, but in the traditional sense, we'll still deal, we'll still deal uh, in stoichiometry with grams and moles and all of it together. So why don't we try an example. The example before us is the following. Uh, the safety airbags in automobiles are inflated by nitrogen gas generated by the rapid decomposition of this solid that's stored inside the airbag. And that decomposition gives you some sodium and the nitrogen gas, and this is what we're really interested in. If an airbag has a volume of 36 liters, and it is to be filled with nitrogen gas at a pressure of 115 atmosphere, we don't want it to go too high, so that it, the airbag does not uh, damage the driver too much, <clears throat> at a temperature of 26, pretty close to room temperature, how many grams of our starting material must be decomposed? And the first thing we'll have to do, essentially, is we'll have to use PV equals NRT, to solve for moles. Once we solve for moles, we can then solve for grams using stoichiometry. So we'll first solve for moles of the gas and then come back and solve for uh, grams of our starting reactant. So why don't we tr attempt that on this next page. So let's go ahead and set up our equation, PV equals NRT. And recall, in this case, we're trying to solve for moles. So rearranged, the equations should look like this. N equals pressure times volume divided by R times T. Now, in our problem, uh, the pressure is given to us as 1.15 atmospheres. The volume is given to us as 36 liters. and um, the temperature as 26 degrees Celsius, which um, converted to Kelvin, plus 273, uh, should give us uh, 299 Kelvin. So the idea here is, let's plug everything in. Uh, recall that R, our gas constant, is still 0 0.0821. 08, or we can say 206 for, for significant figures, liters, atmospheres, moles, Kelvin. So why don't we go ahead and plug those in to solve for moles. So we got ourselves 115 atmospheres multiplied by 36 liters divided by Our constant and don't forget the temperature. So plugging all these in to our calculator, we should come up come out with a nice number. 0 0.08206 299. So hopefully you got yourself 1.687 moles. Now this is our gas, our nitrogen gas, N2. What we're being asked for is the grams of the starting material, 
the grams of our sodium azide, Na and N3. So what we'll have to do is apply some stoichiometry from this point and convert from moles of nitrogen to moles of sodium azide and then to grams of sodium azide. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's begin. We got 1.687 moles of nitrogen. This will be a two-step as we're going from moles of one substance to grams of another. So we'll first go from moles of nitrogen to moles of sodium azide. In this case, the relationship, if you take a look, is 2 to 3. So 2 moles of sodium azide for 3 moles of nitrogen gas. And then we want to convert from moles of sodium azide to grams of the same. And eight and three. A mole, this number comes simply from the periodic table. A mole is equal to, and we have a sodium, which is 22, oops, sodium 2299, and two and three nitrogens, uh, each of which is 1401. So triple that. And we should get ourselves a fine value of. Sixty-five oh two grams. So multiplying across here and uh, dividing as is a suitable times two for a stoichiometry problem divided by three gives us exactly seventy-three point one two. Now seeing that we have. Um, two sig figs for our lowest number from the liters, we'll just say 73 grams, 73 grams of sodium azide. So really, uh, there was no difference, the only difference here is we applied some stoichiometry. We used PVNRT, and then we used some stoichiometry to arrive at our answer. And uh, in this case, we used the standard model of uh, stoichiometric calculations. Next, we'll talk about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Now, <coughs> This law is actually quite simple. The, the law itself says that the total pressure of a mixture of gases equals the sum of the pressures that each would exert if it were present alone. This simply means if you have, say, three gases and you know the pressure of each gas, combine those together and you'll get the total pressure. So here this says simply the total pressure is the pressures of each gas combined. And this makes sense. This is very logical. Uh, then next we'll define something called mole fraction. This is actually a way uh, to express concentration. And mole fraction, uh, designated by x, is a dimensionless number that it simply uh, expresses the ratio of the moles of one compound to the total moles in the mixture. So it's written a bit strangely here, uh, but the pressure, uh, well, this is right here, this here is the mole fraction. So this is your x. So what essentially it's saying is that the total pressure, P1, or not total pressure, I'm sorry, the pressure of the first gas, whatever it is, equals the mole fraction, the fraction of that gas times the total pressure. Essentially what you're saying is take the total pressure and apply to it the fraction of the gas that is in, in view, and you'll get the pressure of that gas. Simple as that. So why don't we try an example here. Uh, a study of the effects of certain gases on plant growth requires a synthetic atmosphere composed of 1.5 mole percent carbon dioxide, 18 mole percent oxygen, and the rest being argon. Usually uh, the real atmosphere uh, contains nitrogen, but in this case we'll use the inert gas argon. Calculate the partial pressures uh, of O2 in the mixture if the total pressure is to be 745 torr the idea. So the way we'll attack this essentially is we'll have to take the total pressure, 745 torr, and multiply it by the mole fraction of the mixture that is oxygen. So first let's find the mole fraction, the x of oxygen. And this will simply be the moles of oxygen divided by total moles. So it looks like we have 1.5 mole percent um, of uh, oxygen. And then on the bottom, we'll put the total. So we'll go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. We got 1.5 from oxygen. We got 18.0 from, uh, I'm sorry, we got 1.5. Let's try that again. It looks like uh, 
CO2 is 1.5. So get rid of that, and we'll have to put oxygen is actually 18.0 or percent. And then at the bottom goes the total. And then we get 80.5. So essentially this is uh, dividing uh, part by whole, as is usually done with percents and ratios, as, as is in this case. So total up the bottom, the denominator. And uh, 18 divided by 100 should give us 0.18. And it's nice that uh, this is adds up to 100. So the bottom here adds up to 100. It's got 0.18 for our mole fraction of oxygen. Then to get the total pressure, uh, or I'm sorry, to get the pressure of the oxygen, we simply apply this mole fraction to, to the total pressure. So the pressure of oxygen then is simply the total pressure uh, times uh, that mole fraction. So total pressure is 745 torr multiplied by 0.18 which gives us times 745 134.1 being that we have three sig figs why don't we do um, 134 torres due to only oxygen this is the pressure essentially of oxygen and uh, recall that mole fraction is a dimensionalness number so this is simply the fraction of one mole or, or of the moles of one substance to the total. Um, that's why there are no units uh, in here. And that this sh one should be pretty uh, straightforward, hopefully. Uh, let's uh, say a few more things about partial pressures. It turns out partial pressures have a role to play, an important role to play, anytime uh, we collect gas over water. Now this is a standard method of collecting a gas, a sample of a gas. In fact, we've demonstrated a few ways of doing this. What you do is you uh, fill a vessel completely with water, you invert it, and then you feed uh, a tube of a reaction, and then you try to collect uh, that gas inside uh, the uh, flask, or beaker in this case. Now it turns out that w the pressure of the atmosphere will be the same as the pressure inside this flask. Uh, However, the gas that you've collected in here actually has some water vapor in it. Um, and this water vapor that's mixed in with the gas must be subtracted away. Uh, so to find only the pressure of the desired gas, we must take away the pressure of the water from the total pressure. And here is a table of uh, the water vapor pressure uh, at different temperatures. So it turns out water actually evaporates at different rates depending on the temperature. If you have high temperatures, say if your temperature is 50 degrees Celsius, then a good uh, amount of oh, water will be evaporating, 92 uh, millimeters of mercury. Here, by the way, at 100 degrees Celsius, you reach 760 millimeters of mercury, which we call is simply the atmospheric pressure uh, at sea level. So we'll have to take a look and subtract away the pressure due to water. Uh, this essentially is a way of being very careful, very quantitative about your uh, amounts of gas. So here's a problem that essentially deals with uh, this concept. A sample of potassium chlorate is partially decomposed, producing oxygen gas that is collected over water. The volume of the gas is such at this temperature and this pressure. How many moles of oxygen are collected? So this is a simple uh, application, again, of Pivnert, PV equals nRT, where we are asked to find the moles. Now, because we've collected this over water, our pressure will have to be adjusted, and that's essentially the only, uh, the only factor here. So we're going to be solving for moles, and rearranging the equation gives us PV over RT. The only thing, our pressure will have to be subtracted. Uh, so we have a total pressure of 765 torr in the flask and uh, a certain amount of this is due to water so we'll have to subtract away the water pressure, water vapor pressure pressure. So if we consult our table at uh, 26 degrees Celsius water produces 25.2 of pressure. So that this is the number we will subtract. So that way we get only the pressure due to the gas. 
So 25.2 was it? 25.2. And this should give us a value of uh, 740. Uh, let's see here, make sure we got uh, 739.8, is that right? Seven thirty nine point eight, and now we can go ahead and plug this into our equation, into our um, ideal gas law equation. This is Torricelli's, by the way. Okay, so n will equal. Let's go and plug this in. Our pressure has to be in atmospheres. So let's go ahead and do seven thirty nine point eight. We'll do a conversion inside the ideal gas law equation over seven sixty to get this into. Um, atmospheres. Our volume is 0 0.250 liters. The R constant, as is usually the case, 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres mole Kelvin. And finally, the temperature is uh, 26 plus 273, uh, which essentially is uh, uh, 299 again. So Let's go ahead and sometimes it's a good idea to, as you calculate this out, to kind of uh, write the numbers out. So how about uh, that way we're careful, we don't put too much into our calculator so it doesn't uh, work against us. 760 times 0.250. So the numerator gives us 0.24336. The denominator gives us... Twenty-four point five three six. And dividing the two numbers, point five three six gives us a value that's a bit uh, small uh, for uh, in our case. Uh, but let's try that again. How many moles? Actually, that looks pretty good. Yeah, so 0 0.00992. So we got three sig figs. How about 992 moles? A small amount, uh, but that is to be expected because we have a quarter of a liter, not much, not much gas. So we should really have uh, maybe a hundredth of a mole or so of this gas, of oxygen gas. So this again is another application of PVNRT. The only uh, new thing that we saw here was this idea of water vapor pressure that has to be subtracted away. And this concludes lesson 5 of chapter 10.